What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of JY Throws. Today my legs aren't responding how I want them to, so I'm going to throw just discus, but I want to explain to you guys some things that I think about to help get the discus to fly more smooth. So to understand how to get a smooth discus release, let's first break down some of the mechanics of a machine that's literally designed to throw a disc nice and smooth every time. So the two main features that I want to point out are its rotational axis and the throwing arm. And it can recreate consistent results because it's got a consistent rotational axis and a consistent throwing arm for both length and stability. And it will always rotate on the same orbit. So the idea is that for you to get nice, smooth, consistent releases, you need to set up a consistent rotational axis and a consistent throwing arm that's nice and sturdy and you're not shortening it by pulling it in. The next thing I wanna quickly cover is the importance of keeping your arms nice and long. First of all, this will help create consistent results, but I also like to use this video as a demonstration of how important the length on a rotational axis is. So this video is titled as a 200 plus mile per hour car that's hand powered, and the person that's going around the center doesn't need to be going that fast, but the car at the other end can be going 200 miles an hour because of the length so if you create a consistent rotational axis, you don't need to rotate that fast around the axis. And if you keep your arm nice and long, at the furthest end of your fingers, it will be moving way faster. And because you're on a consistent axis, you can spin around it a lot faster than if you're off balance. The next thing I wanna talk about is how to hold the discus because this took me a long time to figure out and plays an important role in getting it to come out of your hand nice and flat. If you were to draw a line straight through the middle of the discus, I found that the best hand position is having your index finger on or a little bit behind that line. And that allows it so that if you look here, if I just drop my hand down at my side, it naturally wants to spin out of my hand. And you're essentially trying to recreate that and have the discus spin out of your hand while your arms parallel to the ground. This brings me into the next thing that I quickly want to talk about, and that's rim weight on a discus. A heavier percentage rim weight means that it's harder to accelerate the discus in the first place, but once it's going, it's harder to get it to stop. So in the air, it'll fly more smooth if you can hit it and get it spinning nice out of your hand, and that requires a lot of speed. So I would say if you can get to around 60 meters with a lighter rim weight discus, then you're going to want to start to look at some more expensive, heavier rim weight discs because then you're probably going fast enough to start to hit it well and actually get the benefit from a heavier rim weight disc. The next thing I want to discuss is three main problems that you may see in your throw that may start to cause the disc to wobble. So if you're hitting a nice vertical axis and having the disc work nice and long around you, then it should be coming out smooth, but you may see on some throws that you're still getting some wobbles. So three common problems that I see in my own throwing as well as others is if you're scooping the discus and that's having it really low and behind you and trying to get it up higher by just lifting your arm up on the finish and that's creating a weird orbit. And since the disc is flat and you wanna keep it nice and parallel the whole time, then that will cause some wobble. Another one is if the disc gets too far behind you and you start to pull off on the finish and that again will take it off of its orbit so you're not keeping it on that nice smooth path that you can accelerate it. And the third one is you're getting anxious and pulling in your arm and this is exaggerated, but if you start to jerk your arm or tweak your wrist or do some weird stuff at the last moment, then it's very easy to mess up the discus flight. I want to leave you guys with a couple things that you can start to apply to your own practice and some things that I think about during my throw. The first thing I'm trying to do is keep my arm in line with my shoulder and in line with my body. You don't want it to get too far behind because like that clay pigeon thrower, you want to have a nice, firm, rigid arm that's nice and long so that at your fingertips, it's accelerating as fast as possible. Another really good thing to do is picking. This is just working on the stand throws and start to think about keeping your shoulders nice and level and keeping the discus on a nice smooth path with a nice solid rotational axis. And you can crank out a hundred of these in a day and barely be tired at all. And it's a great way to really see the release and start to notice the things that are causing wobble. The final thing is just a visual to consider. You want to keep the discus on a nice rotational orbit, working around the middle axis that's your body, and all you're doing is just continuing the motion straight when it's time to hit the finish. So it takes a lot of practice, 
but if you can get the timing, all you're doing is keeping the disc on that path and sending it straight. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Hopefully this video helped you understand some things to think about on your finish to help get the discus to fly out more smooth. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one.